is Robert William Raji. In this session, I am going to give you a brief outline about my research work and under the title Nature Based Permanent Solution for Flood and Drought Management by Making it Visible to All. A study report for the incorporation of hydrology in biotechnology and vice versa. Before entering into the study, the study started with few basic questions. In 2003-2004, severe drought was faced in Tamil Nadu. Due to that, farmer suicide due to loss in agriculture happened. As a result, Kajitoti in Tamil, potted bowl was opened in common. All this happened due to the failure of seasonal rainfall. Why all these things happen is the basic question. Then, a lot of water is available in seas and ocean, still drought exists. Coastal area is having a saline track. Literatures and physical observation is mismatching. No prayer plan to overcome the drought and flood conditions. Permanent solution for managing both the extents not yet implemented. Why? Flood and drought management and its related climate change is having a few basic questions. Why flood occurs? Why can't we control the flood? What should we do to stop the flood? Same question gets applicable for drought. Why drought occurs? Why can't we control the drought? Why should, what should we do to stop the drought? Then when we are coming to the climate change, is climate change related with flood and drought is the main question. What is the connectivity if it is uh, related? Is it controllable? The common connection with these three issues is focused on water. When we are focusing on water, once again a list of questions occurs. From where this water came to here, how we are getting water from underground? The groundwater. What is the origin of groundwater? What is the origin of surface water? Does the literature have correct scientific explanation regarding the origin of both the waters? What is the connectivity between the two waters? Is the water cycle having correct information regarding the connectivity? Melting of ice from Arctic and Antarctic is the reason for the increased sea levels is reported. Is the statement correct? Groundwater depletion is more and so uh, it got exhausted up to several meters depth. Is there any way to resume back the depleted resource? How water is responsible for flood, drought and its related climate change? Are we managing the resources properly? If our management is proper, then why flood, drought and its related climate change happens? Why water scarcity is projected for the future generations? Why we are lagging in our management can be nullified the flood and drought conditions? For all these questions, my research had concluded with a knowledge gap and it was addressed through the science and technology by focusing on groundwater. The detailed scientific answer for all the above questions is made available in my research publications. So the first part of my publication covers the basics of groundwater, which is corrected scientifically with the second water cycle proposed and published as a research paper under the title, Biotechnological Aspects of Basic Groundwater Hydrology, uh, published in the Hydrology Journal of Indian Association of Hydrologists in 2016. The second publication covers the evolution of water. Surface water and groundwater were addressed with the scientific possibilities along with the confirmation of the second water cycle which I had proposed in my first paper. Thereby concluded my research work with the applied example and trained the water management protocol for the future generations to nullify flood and drought and its related climate change. So the entire thing is published in Resolve Ministry of Groundwater Basics through Biotechnology, a gateway for the management of global hydrologic extremes and related climate change in the Journal of Hydrogeology and Hydrologic Engineering, Site in 2019. The same paper got selected and published as a book chapter, chapter number nine, in Recent Developments in Engineering Research, Volume 6, 2020. I had framed an abbreviation for groundwater according to the research. G stands for gift of nature globally utilized. R, the resource on surface and subsurface. O stands for out of knowledge and sight. U, under assumption, hence unconsidered and neglected in policy making. N, natural process, hidden and mysterious, invisible. D, depleted resource important for ecological management. W, worldwide alert on scarcity. A, approach with acceptable science. T, technology defined for proper management. E, essential for ecological balance and climate change. Or, revolution redefined with rectification plan for future generations. Now, we are going to enter into the outline of the study for making groundwater visible to all. We are starting from the first question. Where did our groundwater came from? Where did our Earth's total water came from? For these questions, I have one direct answer.
answer that it is related to religious and spiritual God creator. For this, there is no second question from my end because it, the answer is highly religious and it is subjected to faith, belief and God himself. When we are entering to the science, the direct answer is Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory deals with the billions of years of expansion where evolution started. I don't want to get into that because we don't have that much time. But this is a, a comparison between the Big Bang and creation. Whether it is going to be spiritual answer or scientific answer, the brainstorming area begins here. The Earth is having a landmass of 29.2%, whereas it is covered with water of about 70.8%. Keep it aside. This is the layers of atmosphere. Here we can see a variable range of temperatures from minus degree to as high as 2000 degrees reported. Keep this aside. Now coming to the composition of dry air near sea level. We all are aware that nitrogen is the major composition of air and the second major composition is the oxygen. Almost 21% nitrogen is 78%. Hydrogen, they, it is reported in tracer. I am focusing on oxygen and hydrogen because oxygen and hydrogen makes the chemistry of water. Oxygen molecular weight is 31.9 and whereas hydrogen molecular weight is 2. Keep this aside. Now, let us consider the area and depth of the ocean. The Pacific Ocean, as we all know very well, it is the widest and deepest ocean in the world. Remaining all are smaller than Pacific Ocean. When we are coming to the height of the mountains, we all know very well that Mount Everest is the highest mountain in the world and remaining mountains are shorter than that. Next comes the question, which state of water was first formed? Whether it is liquid, vapor, cloud, rain, ice. These are the scientific possibilities. The volcanoes confirm that our earth is having a hot burning mantle inside. When the molten earth starts cooling, the surface of the earth should have gone for drying. As the atmosphere is filled with varying range of temperatures at the initial stage of cooling on the earth's surface, the total hydrogen and oxygen molecule should have come in together and gone for freezing based on the earth's vacuum and pressure. As a result, the earth's surface should have got covered with a thick, dense snow and ice. Later, the ice should have got fractured and started melting due to the temperature and pressure variations on the Earth's surface. Thus, the first splitting of hydrogen from oxygen should have started. This is the point where the first water vapor should have formed. And the melted water should have started to move down from higher surface to lower surface, thus forming the first surface flow. The first runoff should have started here. The first runoff from the melting of ice should have reached the lower level of the air and should have started collecting there hour by hour and day by day, which is today called the season ocean beds. That should be our first lakes and ponds on the surface of the air. Due to the air's varying temperature and pressure, continuous breakdown of hydrogen and oxygen molecules should have taken place from the melting of ice, surface water flow, and from the lowest level of our air, where the runoff ended and the first accumulation of liquid water started. First, evaporation and absorption of our planet should have started here. Based on the molecular weight, which we had uh, seen earlier, the low molecular weight hydrogen molecule should have started to move higher and higher and form a white mass called the cloud. The first cloud formation should have started this way. The single small clouds should have started to move in the direction of the wind, mix with other clouds and form a cloud mass. Variation in the atmospheric pressure vacuum and temperature should have collected all the scattered clouds. Due to this sudden change, a molecular bombardment should have taken place, resulting in the first Earth's thunder and lightning. Due to, during favorable conditions, atmospheric vacuum, pressure and temperature, these three are the factors which is controlling the planet. The bonding of hydrogen and oxygen molecules should have reverted back, and after complete saturation, it should have come down to Earth in the form of rain. This should be the planet's first rain. The first rain should have given birth to the first fresh water runoff around the ice covered surface in the path of the first water flow started by the initial melting of ice. The first streams and river formation should have started here. Day by day, once the water level starts increasing the lowest level of the surface of the planet, the same water should have got absorbed towards the bottom and along the side base of the low level throughout the surface of the planet. The, this should have resulted in the formation of our planet's first sea and ocean. 
the entire continuous process should have resulted in the formation of two water cycles one is surface visible water cycle and the second is underground invisible water cycle the water cycle what we know all these days what we had studied covers the maximum possibilities and uh, the surface water cycle is uh, getting proved whereas when we are looking into the ground water it is not matching only one we are not satisfied in the research that the groundwater flow 24 hours is the groundwater story this 24 hours is going to reveal the history and mystery of groundwater we had studied with the help of a pit test tub test field test break test and a bottle test this is the uh, uh, pit test model a yeah, pit was made and what was uh, poured in the pit immediate absorption was noted then different time intervals the absorption spectrum was captured for one hour this is the depth wise uh, absorption and that is the sidewise absorption for first 10 hours and till the pit, pit, pit gets empty the complete absorption spectrum was studied and then up to 116 hours the pit was uh, frequently uh, intermittently filled and the absorption spectrum was studied a model a uh, tabletop model was made to represent the planet's surface uh, this is the uh, top test this we can use as the tabletop model in laboratory to uh, study the water or groundwater two tubs were selected one as such and the second one with holes at the bottom water was filled the first step we, uh, we can see the saturated water level on the surface whereas in the second tub tub b there is no saturation we are seeing the wet surface but there is no saturation this uh, resembles the depleted groundwater which is uh, we are losing all these days so this is the model of the uh, field test where four uh, pits were made in different corners and one center pit was uh, uh, made as an observation pit uh, in the center pit we had observed the water collection this is the brick test model which uh, we had studied uh, in the brick test uh, uh, we are uh, studied the capillary movement of the water absorption for this uh, almost 13 hours are taken for the absorption and after 24 hours the brick was found fully saturated then two uh, sand columns were made and a concentrated solution was poured in the sand column uh, bottom uh, collected the filtered water uh, this uh, two sand columns represent the filtration and chromatography uh, principles. Filtration and chromatography are the principles which is uh, working in the coastal saline area. Uh, accordingly, chromatography is the science and technology behind the coastal saline aquifer. Uh, for this, uh, as I am uh, almost working for uh, 14 years in industry, uh, covered almost all the analytical methods. Here, HPLC is the um, advanced to system we are using for identifying the uh, elements uh, molecules the hplc chromatograms is a fine example to explain the physical process scientifically and technically one more observation from the bottle test when the sand columns were first filled with water and left undisturbed the filtration was uniform up to five top ups once i when i disturbed the, the column by tapping from the side to tighten the soil layer I was unable to get uniform uh, flow. So this information gives that if the land surface is disturbed by blasting or through airtag, it will definitely affect the water movement and flow. This is the surface picture of our planet where the elevated areas represent the landmass and the depressions represent the seas and oceans. From the uh, possibilities, and with the experiments, I am concluding here that the groundwater came from uh, first drop of water which entered the land mass uh, by means of absorption, which in turn had continued all these years of formation or evolution of the current year. This is going to be a billion year process if we are considering the evolution or 24 hour process if you are considering the creation. Thus, the movement of groundwater is from seas or oceans toward land mass and not from land to sea as mentioned in the literatures. Surface water and groundwater are moving in the opposite directions and not on the parallel. Thus, earth is covered by water on 100% basis, 70% on seas and oceans, 30% on land as groundwater, surface water. All living beings on land 
and water, which are the carriers of water in their body cells, getting connected with both the waters and to the atmosphere. This is the water cycle, both surface and uh, invisible water cycle. Both the water cycle start from the seas and ocean. Uh, principle varies and the direction also moves in the opposite. Both the water cycles are getting connected in the surface runoff. This is the complete water cycle. In the water cycle, whatever we had studied, we are facing the single-sided image. Whereas we have to take the mirror impression of the image and this is the water cycle which is happening on the complete landmass. According to the study, it is concluded that our planet Earth itself is a huge water treatment plant with a fine automated distillation, condensation, filtration and chromatographic units. For concluding the proposed concept, I had compared the concept with the large scale applied uh, technologies uh, and uh, he is the model person, the waterman of India 2015, Mr. Rajendra Singh from Rajasthan and Mr. Ravindra Patak from Bihar. I had compared these two case studies with the conceptual study. They had used the ancient technology, I had used the biotechnology. They had used the ancient practices, I had used the filtration, absorption, chromatographic capillary as the scientific background. They had constructed Johar, spines and agars as the structure. Here I had used a pit test, field test, brick test and bottle test. Uh, the structure description is large earthen dams that access water supply uh, for Johar. Whereas spines is concerned, uh, pines are the ca channels carrying water from rivers. Others are low-lying field with embankments that act as a water reservoir. New model to uh, study the groundwater formation uh, and the flow, the second water cycle is compared with these structures. Uh, the technology life period is uh, 1500 BC. Uh, the second uh, study is uh, 2000 years ago. They had used the uh, technology in between 1985 to 2007, 2006 to 2018. The number of structures constructed is 8,600 johats and two pines. Uh, because of this, uh, johats had covered 1,068 villages and pines had covered 150 to 250 villages. The square kilometers is mentioned as 6,500 square kilometers and pines had covered 125 and 159 kilometers. Uh, as a result of their hard work, the water table had uh, rose from about 100 meters to between 13 meters and 3 meters. And for the second one, hand pumps and bells that were abandoned are now working. Thereby, the proposed concept is concluded with these two case studies. Man-made mistakes, sir. as we all know very well, we had spoiled the entire universe because of our action. This affected the surface water cycle as well as the underground invisible water cycle. For rectifying our mistakes, sir, I am proposing groundwater revolution, which will be the corrective action for all our mistakes. Sir. This groundwater revolution, uh, I am giving five resolutions, rectify, repair, refill, replace, and resume the groundwater naturally. Thought process for this mission is restructure. For restructuring, we have to rectify and repair. Action expected out of this thought process is water network. For this water network, we have to refill and replace. Finally, resume groundwater issued through the natural route. Groundwater operation plan, Kudimaramuthi in Tamil, desilting the canals, rivers, lakes, and ponds is just a temporary solution. Restructuring the canals, rivers, lakes, and ponds alone will be the permanent solution as per this study, comparing the test conducted and the possibilities. Formation of water network by connecting both the surface water and groundwater manually through restructuring will induce and enhance the natural physical process as described in this study will alone help to stay away from all the hydrological extremes projected for the future generations. Zero discharge of rainwater to the oceans by diverting it towards the water network until achieving the goal, resuming groundwater levels throughout the globe. Why water in biotechnology or biotechnology in water? Biotechnology is an interdisciplinary field of study which covers all the field except the basics of water. Water, as we all know very well, it is the basic biological molecule of life science, part of environmental engineering and foundation of hydrology. In 2014, Professor Dave Rudolph, he had stated that we have very little headroom left to manage our water resources. In most cases, we have the models needed to make these predictions, but what we often lack are the data to appropriately inform these models. He is right. We have number of numerical computational models for uh, 
studying the, the hydrology, whereas the physical model is absent. And this study has given the physical data for answering all those models. This is the reviewer's comments. With these comments, my paper got accepted for publication. The reviewer had stated that the water cycle proposed by the author is subjected to acceptance by hydrological professionals. And this is the uh, communication which I have received from the Department of Biotechnology from the Ministry of uh, uh, Science and Technology, Government of India, that groundwater hydrology is not in the DBT's mandate. Mathematical and computational models lack the data to address completely is the expert's view. Whereas in this study, the physical process which carries the data for the mathematical and computational model is elaborated in detail. Since the science for basics of water is born from biotechnology, the same should be incorporated in both the fields. Biotechnology and hydrology is my humble request to the scientific community. My independent research journey from 2004 to 2021 ends here by clearing the basics of the water, both surface water and groundwater, scientifically and had projected the permanent solution for to overcome the hydrological extremes. Biotechnology and hydrology didn't help me for PhD all these years due to the field of study where the topic and the field is not covered in their mandate as mentioned. Let the scientific community decide now. For any queries regarding this study, kindly refer the publications mentioned and reach me in my mail. Thank you.